We have an epic road trip range test for you with two very different trucks. We've got a gasoline powered V8 GMC Sierra and the all new fully electric F-150 Lightning. We're going on a road trip with two identical trailers and we're gonna see which one can go further on a single tank with the GMC or a single charge with the Ford. But what happens if I run out of fuel, which is what we're planning, or you run out of electricity? That's where I come in. They gave me a radio. I also have a Ford with power boost, so I'll be able to plug in for Tommy. And we also have two gallons of extra fuel in case you get stranded as well. So we're fully covered. Once again, I have a radio. This GMC has a 24 gallon tank. So I just need to top it off, fill it up. So I'm at the maximum fuel level for this range test. All right, there it is. It's topped off. It's time to meet Tommy. Just like Andre in that GMC, I'm gonna get this Lightning fully topped up to 100%. Now I'm here at an Electrify America DC fast charging station. We're gonna plug it in. But I do wanna demonstrate one issue. The vast majority of these EA stations are actually pull in, and as you can see, that trailer sticks well into the drive area at this Walmart here. So uh, certainly blocking the roadway, but there's no other way unless I completely unhitch it and then hitch it back up. But luckily we're all the way at the back of this lot, so I think we can get away with it this one time. We wanna give a big thank you to Magna International for sponsoring this video and this Magna Minute. Who is Magna? They're one of the biggest developers of leading edge automotive and truck tech in the world. For instance, that driver's assistance technology that helps you stay in your lane and monitor your cruise control speeds, Magna was essential in developing those technologies for GM Super Cruise. A system that's capable of lane changes without any of your own direct input. Get behind the wheel of almost any new vehicle in the world and odds are you're going to experience a piece of Magna engineering, design, manufacturing, or all three. Go see the power of Magna for yourself by clicking on the link below in the description and checking out Magna's YouTube channel. There you can get a glimpse into the future of automotive for yourself. So you can see the state of charge there, 100% is predicting 282 miles of range, but that is not towing. So we're gonna input the trailer info, and it's actually gonna recalculate that range, which is pretty cool. We'll see how spot on that is when we bring it down to like under 5% state of charge. In the towing page here in the Lightning, we're gonna actually add this trailer. I'm just gonna call it George, per case's request. It's uh, electric trailer brakes. We're gonna go brake effort medium. And then let's input some information. So it is about 25 feet long. Uh, trailer width is eight and a half feet. So we'll do round that up to nine. The height, right around 12 feet there. So here are the measurements for our trailers. So 25 feet long, trailer width eight and a half, rounded up to nine. Trailer height about 12. Trailer weight 6,000 pounds. And now we're sitting at 160. So it subtracted about 120 miles of rated range by adding in those trailer inputs. And we'll see how accurate that is. Of course, I can also add a trailer. GM actually makes this pretty easy. I'm gonna call it ATC1. And then it's gonna ask me a few things. Conventional. Cargo boat travel, yep. We have a very nice travel trailer. This comparison would not be possible without these wonderful, beautiful trailers. This is the Game Changer Pro Series by ATC, and I have them thanks to Complete Trailers near Denver, Colorado. So use the link below, check them out. This trailer is about 20 feet long on the floor. It's humongous. Why is it so big and tall? Well, it's also a toy hauler. Let me show you. It's overbuilt. This trailer weighs about 6,000 pounds, just the way it sits with all the options. Here you can put your toys in this garage or cook at your kitchen. This is a very premium trailer. The price on this could be near $100,000 or about $95,000, depending on options. 
Uh, but the best thing of all for this comparison, we have two identical models. So we can compare these two trucks exactly with the same load. And currently GM, Chevrolet and GMC have this feature which is unique in this half ton full size truck segment, gross combined weight alert. Basically after I accelerate a couple times, if the truck determines that there's too much load, that the trailer may be too heavy, it'll give me a warning. Uh, but after driving a, a few, what, a mile uh, already, it's uh, not giving me any alerts. And the trailer weighs 6,000 pounds. I know that because I checked it at the scales. Guys, I have been waiting for this for many, many months or years, in fact. We have two identical beautiful trailers. We have two very interesting trucks. And we're doing this road trip. We're leaving Longmont, Colorado, and we're gonna go south on I-25 until we can go no more. How about that? It's a great idea, Andre, because this has been the number one question with the new electric pickup, the F-150 Lightning. How far can I tow my camper? How far can I tow my trailer? Well, we're about to find out compared to an old school gasoline truck. So Andre, how much do these trailers weigh? Well, these trailers actually weigh just about 6,000 pounds a piece. They're very nice. They're toy haulers. They're also very tall, which means a lot of air resistance. Now, my truck says I can go, as of now, 156 miles on a single charge, and I have the navigation set to a charger in Pueblo, Colorado, which is 147 miles away, and it says I'll be there with 6% remaining, but we'll see if that actually comes true. Yeah, it's a little bit unknown because my truck says I have 264 miles of range left. So obviously, uh, I think gas can have an upper hand here. My V8 6.2 liter. Nathan, what do you think? How far do you think I'm gonna make it on the single charge? Well, that depends because, you know, I don't know if you connected your canooter valve properly and made sure that your throttle coil is actually, you know, activated with the right amount of gigawatts. Tell me, I have no idea. I mean, I'm gonna guess 130 miles, uh, but it could be worse. All right, dude, well, we're gonna hit the highway here, start heading south, and we'll see what happens. So we've gone six miles, and we've lost 10 miles of range already, and now it's saying we're gonna reach the charger in Pueblo that I was hoping to hit at 1%, and that's come down from 6% in just six miles. So I think we're gonna have to recalculate our strategy a little bit, maybe stop well before Pueblo, perhaps in Colorado Springs. With this new refresh for the GMC Sierra lineup of trucks, GMC is doing something more luxurious. It's this ultimate truck, Denali Ultimate. There used to be a Denali package with an ultimate addition before, but now it stands on its own with a unique interior. You can see here with super nice leather, massaging seats, heads up display. Uh, basically every feature, suede headliner, everything is included. You can also get it as a diesel, three liter straight six turbo diesel Duramax, or with this V8 like I have here, the 6.2 liter. Um, and it also has Super Cruise. All right, Andre, so how is your assistance features on the highway? Dude, uh, it's awesome. So my GMC Denali Ultimate Edition comes with Super Cruise, which is a hands-free driver assistance technology that works on major highways, pre-mapped highways. And right now, even with a trailer, I am hands-free. I'm just talking to you and I'm monitoring the highway and there's a tiny bit of sway and the system is taking care of it all by itself. I cannot believe this. That's pretty awesome, Andre. Now, I also have something similar. I've got what they call Blue Cruise, which is completely hands-free too, but I can't activate it with the trailer. However, I do have a semi-autonomous feature going where it's got lane centering and it's got adaptive cruise control. So as long as I keep my hand on the steering wheel, it's doing a really good job of keeping me right in the middle of the lane. So it's not completely hands-free with towing, which honestly, you wanna be hands-free when towing, uh, but it's doing a pretty good job, actually. This video is brought to you by our friends over at Gen Y. They build the strongest, most HD hitches in the industry. We use them for everything. We know they're gonna work. They have all sorts of different configurations and sizes. Right now we're going through Denver. 
the traffic is flowing pretty well actually we haven't had any major slowdowns 55 is the current speed limit so we're between about 55 and 65 or 70 outside the city so tell me my friend how much energy are you using right now well we've gone 39.9 miles 40 miles and i am down to 61 percent so yeah it's pretty much spot on one percent of battery per mile in another i don't know 25 30 miles or so we're gonna have to start getting uh, a little creative when it comes to finding a place to charge i think well that is quite interesting uh, can you guess what uh mp i'm getting <laughs> yes so i'm gonna guess you are getting 11. oh wow tommy you're way too optimistic i'm at seven point six right now 7.6 miles per gallon i am at 0 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour so i'm under one mile per kilowatt hour so how does the f-150 lightning tow well it's very confident so obviously huge amounts of power over 770 foot pounds of torque which is pretty nuts brakes feel really good but it is a little jiggly we do have a little bit of kind of vibration coming through a little bit of up and down movement now it could be of course the road but it's been pretty consistent throughout the trip um, trailer sway control has been okay and the trailer brake controller is super easy to access we just crested the 50% mark we are at 49% state of charge and we've gone 51 miles I mean, we are bang on the money with 1% per mile. Uh, but look, I mean, the trip estimator is still still not really figuring it out. It's saying we have 75 miles of range. At this point, we've been driving 50 miles. It should probably recalculate and figure out, hey, this is not accurate. And now you can see we are not gonna make it to our hope to stop in Colorado Springs, which was like 115 miles away, because it's saying we're gonna get there with zero. And I bet soon enough it's gonna say we're gonna get there with uh, negative. It's gonna say we're gonna to have to stop and charge. So we're gonna keep going for another 20 miles or so and then find a new solution. Hey Andre, um, things are not looking good in the lightning. Oh no, well, what's going on? Well, we are down to 21% state of charge and we just checked our, uh, our plug share app. Dude, there's just nothing between here and the springs, so. Oh man, the, car, the truck's saying driving range low now. So, I think I'm gonna have to take the next exit, dude. I'm not gonna make it to a fast charger if we keep going this direction. I'm gonna have to turn around and find one closer. I'm gonna have to slow it down a little bit, I think, dude. It's gonna be tight, tight, tight. I have a lot of range remaining. I'm not gonna tell you quite yet how much range I have remaining. I wanna keep it a surprise. Uh, but I will follow you, how about that? Yeah, that sounds good to me, Andre. Um, I'm gonna bring the speeds down to about 55 here, uh, and we'll pull off and then see where we're at. Dude, I'm I'm a little disappointed. I, I thought 100 miles would be easy with this trailer, but the wind profile, I think, was the deciding factor. Yeah, but it's not like we're towing a billboard, Andre. This is a real trailer that someone with a full-size truck would look into buying. Yeah, this is not really all that acceptable. Yeah, uh, realistically, hmm, the range is an issue. We drove 75 miles south, that's as far as we can make it. There's absolutely nothing for the next basically, what, 40 miles or so? So we had to turn around, and I even think getting back what 10 miles to Castle Rock is gonna be a stress so I've pulled over on the frontage road we're gonna keep the speeds about 40 all right folks I think we're gonna do it we're pretty close to a charger the truck is not happy though it is flashing all sorts of battery low warnings what about is it pulling uh, power do you have a hundred percent of acceleration and no Andre great question I'm actually down to 90 percent of acceleration so it is starting to pull power absolutely gentlemen I think we're gonna do it baby there they are, we see them, we made it. All right, let's go see where we're at. Heck yes, Andre, we made it to our destination. So Andre, 85.9 miles. Basically cutting in half his No, mileage. it's a third. Well, yeah, it is a third. 320 miles is his range. Uh, he went 88 miles. Well, this is insane. You still had a little bit of space. So to be fair, the lightning, I had another 9%. So we could have gone maybe another nine more miles, been right at 95 miles from 100 to zero. 
Still, and it's a third of the range, dude. A couple of parameters worth noting on this test, the outside temperature was 80 degrees Fahrenheit and both trucks had the internal temperature set at 70 degrees Fahrenheit with air conditioning on automatic. Now the trip from Northern Longmont to Castle Rock, we gained about 1,000 feet in elevation and we did have an occasional crosswind of about 10 miles per hour. Now, kind of what we wanted to do was run it completely out of energy and then use the hybrid to kind of put some juice back into it. But when we realized we're towing, it's all highway driving, there's not a lot of exits, we decided- Kind of dangerous. Yeah, we decided to be a little bit safe. So we, uh, we're calling it quits at 86 miles. I'm gonna plug it in. What are you gonna do? My truck is showing 129 miles left of my range. How about I just go back to Longmont and forget, just leave Tommy here. Wait, so you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna try to make the trip all the way back on one tank. Exactly. Where, where I got completely stuck one way. Yeah, why not? You know what we should do is once we get to Longmont, if we make it, call Tommy. So we're gonna plug it in. Poor Andre's gotta keep driving without peeing and we're gonna go get some chicken. This whole area of the parking lot is now unusable. The only other thing Tommy could do is basically decouple the trailer, park it over there, and then come over here and plug in. That's the only way he would be able to prevent people from having a drive-through issue. Look at this. Tommy's blocking basically all of Target. So they're probably not gonna sponsor us in the future. Yeah, so we got ourselves some Cane's Chicken. Andre's back on the road. So the pro of Andre, he's gonna get to his destination much faster, but we get chicken. So what this tells me, Nathan, is that electric pickup trucks, actually as good as the Lightning is, because it did really well on our eye gauntlet test, are really for kind of shorter excursions. You know, maybe around your city or town, going to the lake. You mentioned going to a lake. Dude, you can't go to a lake unless that place has a place to charge up. Uh, I mean, that's the reality of it. Well, I don't know. My favorite lake is about 45 miles away from my house. So, I mean, maybe that could work out. But no matter, uh, you know what I can do in my GMC? I can actually go maybe even twice the distance, maybe more. Yeah, I, it's gonna take a long time until battery technology comes anywhere near internal combustion technology when it comes to range. So this is a feature which is not exclusive to the Lightning, other F-150s have it. Um, and it's a cool thing to kind of show on TikTok. Shameless shout out for my TikTok, but I always wondered how useful it is. Well, in situations like this, it can be useful. So if you push this button, the console shifter folds down, this folds up, and now check this out. We got ourselves a chicken platform. Check it out guys, so my total trip meter is 155.8 miles, so almost twice the distance of what Tommy did in the Lightning, and I have 65 reported miles remaining and about a quarter tank remaining. Fuel is very expensive these days and this video would not really be possible without our friends at Sinclair. I have my DinoPay app here, if you load it up and connect it, uh, you can get at least 10 cents per gallon savings, maybe more in some areas. Um, and also, they have Dino Care. Check it out, on every grade of fuel, not just the premium stuff. Check the link to the Sinclair app in the description of this video for savings and also to get your engine running more efficiently with Dino Care. Nathan, are you ready for this? Yeah, I'd rather you use diesel. No, please no. <laughs> No diesel. So I am using premium like before because this is a premium truck. Right. That's what really, they really strongly recommend it. Okay. Ah. Oh, oh, uh, 30 seconds please. Double, okay. double click. Oh yeah. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> a double <laughs> click. 17.371 gallons, 93.79 dollars, dude. That's. That's a lot of dollars, actually. It's kind of steep. Yeah. All right, so we're at about 74% state of charge. We have been here for 45 minutes or so. 
We ultimately decided not to follow Andre all the way back to the starting point for a couple of reasons. First of all, charging a lightning all the way up to 100% is quite a long process. It's much faster if you stop at 75% and then we'd have to stop again. And quite honestly, we just ran out of time and we had to drop the trailer off. So we decided just to fill up enough to get to the trailer drop off point halfway up the route. We're gonna load on up and start hitting up I-25. Hey Tommy, this is uh, Andre and Nathan. Hey Andre, how's it going? Hey Nathan, how's it going? Hey, uh, we, we just filled up our truck, so we're, we're, we're here. We already filled up and topped off. Oh, I'm still like 45 minutes out. Yes, yeah. so we figured uh, this out. So I'm going to do this live, okay Tommy? So I went, according to our trip, 155.8 miles, and I used 17.3 eight, nine gallons. My fuel efficiency overall was 8.9. Okay, there you go. What did you pay, Andre? $93.89, I believe. Ooh. Oh. I'm willing to bet that you're not gonna pay as much. Well, so I paid, what, 27 bucks for my 75% charge, up to 75%. So, I mean, honestly, when you consider that we only drove 86 miles and we didn't even fully charge up all the amount we drove. I mean, it's pretty expensive too on electricity. Not quite as you're expensive, but That's it. it is expensive. Andre, I think what we learned is you can go well over twice the distance towing with a gasoline truck as you can with an electric truck with the exact same yeah. trailer. When we were coming up with this concept, we talked about towing something more aerodynamic, perhaps water tanks strapped to a flatbed trailer. But we realized that's pretty silly. This is the real world. People tow boxes, people tow travel trailers. If you're looking to go on a camping trip, you're not gonna turn to your friend and say, hey, sorry, we can't tow your trailer. It doesn't have the correct aerodynamic profile. No, you're gonna tow the job at hand. And in this case, these ATC trailers worked beautifully. I think the big takeaway, Andre, the F-150 Lightning, at least in this test with this trailer, about 1% of charge used per mile, so the realistic range, about 100 miles or so. And certainly with that GMC, even though you're burning dinosaurs, you went 155 miles, no problem, with plenty of reserve left. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, you saw it here first. Absolutely, and we'll see you on the next episode. And please go back to alltfl.com for everything automotive.